Hey everybody, so today we're going to look at applying a material to conduit using the uh, paint button. And this kind of came up because of a Discord chat. Um, and if you're interested in, in joining the Discord server, uh, the link's below. We, have, we talk about all sorts of cool things, but a lot of folks will ask questions. And one of the questions was, how do I uh, assign a material to conduit? quickly because the paint function the paint button is really slow and tedious especially for conduit because if we look at this and we try to do it and so uh jump to the modified tab we'll see that that's set to paint we're going to use this copper material there's actually four faces okay and if you ex include these planar faces at the end that's six um which i don't really think those matter but these ones do if you want to show a certain material and so you can see i, cl I clicked on it. it looks kind of good but if we um turn off those, those lines but if we look it's still gray and we only grabbed one of the four faces and there's no easy way to tab into it you can't select a bunch of faces at once at least at least I've tried and I can't get it to, to do that. Um, and so if you had to do this for tons of stuff, that could be just terribly boring. Um, you could use object styles. And so if you jump to object styles and then went down to conduits, you could apply a material. We'll use that copper one, click OK. And, but the drawback there is it doesn't show all of them, um, or sorry, it, it applies it to all of them and doesn't give you an option to show them, uh, with different materials. And so this here is power. And then these four here are telecom. And so object styles is going to apply it to everything that's different than ducks. And you can see here, um, we've got two different ones. This is supply, and then this one is um, return. And so what I've done here is in this system itself, I just went to edit type. So I went to the type properties, we'll switch it to the supply, and then you can see here, I just assigned copper to it. And you can have multiple, um, multiple system types uh, and you can assign different materials but can't really do that with conduit and um, and so that's where well let's you know use paint and see see if, if that works and if there's an easy way to do it in dynamo and fortunately there is there's a paint method and you would just pass in the element itself Okay, and then the material that you're going to use, and then the face. Uh, and so in this case, there's six faces, so you pass six faces into the method. Um, and then this fitting, by the way, is not going to change. We can actually assign a material to a fitting pretty easily. Just within the family itself, we can even create a, a parameter that an instance or a type parameter that we can change for certain types. Um, if all you wanted to do was schedule a specific material, then an easier way to do, do that, if you weren't trying to render something out, um, it would be to just assign a, a project parameter to the material. And then like in this, this case, I've got this, this con mat material. If we come over here, uh, we can assign it any material material we want. And then um, scroll up to schedules. Then you can schedule that if you wanted to. Um, so I've got this one here, and this is going to show us that all, the, all that conduit is copper. Jump back out. I'm going to grab these telecom ones. Go here to edit type. Let's just switch them to a different standard. OK, 
come back here, we can see here's those different conduits. So um, you could create a schedule with those. And so that's one, I would do that if I was trying to just show what material something was. Uh, but if it was for rendering purposes, I would use this paint method and, and use Dynamo. Um, and so originally when I built this, I just built it to apply it to all conduits. And then I put a filter in it to look for certain service types. And then um, I added a function just recently to uh, remove the paint. Um, I would not use this at my firm. Uh, we don't do anything like this. It may come up in the future, but my thought was, okay, if you're going to apply this paint for rendering purposes or for whatever, then you may want to remove it from the project when it's done. And so, uh, there's a pretty easy paint method, remove paint method that you can use to do that. So let's just talk about kind of what's going on here and then we'll look at um, what's going on in the Python script. So we're grabbing all the conduits, all right? And then here we're looking at a certain parameter of, of the conduit, which is service type. We only want power, so we're passing in X. X is the list. And then this is checking to see if any of those items in that list equal um, you know, power and then it's going to give us a true false and we can see here index two index two false so everything's working uh, index one index one is true power um, and index one so that that looks good pass it in over here and if we drop this down we can see it's filtered the list we've got our four items up here in the end list if we hover over this we'll see that it's the true items so that's perfect um, and then we pass that into into our python script and here is the material we pass in the material i'm not so for the methods we actually just need the material id i just grab that within the python script so um that returns the material and then down here this is just saying is it true you want to apply the paint or false do you want to remove the paint and so let's just go ahead and kind of take a look at this so all right, so I've got it set to, well, let me set it to true. If I run it, we'll see it applies the paint. That looks good. And then if we set it to false and run it, we'll see it removes it. This one uh, conduit down here is power. And if we click on it and change it to something else, set this back to true, run it, we'll see it only updates the conduit that has power. So you could have also all your service types. You could look for all of them and then have them all applied a different material. Um, and so this is much better than object styles or manually applying the right material to everything. Um, this does grab all the faces, as you can see. Um, so in here, the Python script, that's doing the bulk of, bulk of the work. We're using the document class because that has the paint methods in it. And then the option class is actually used uh, to grab the right geometry. So I'm not going to pretend to know what I'm talking about there. But essentially it's like a, a filter almost for a list. Like in 7 index you have these different parameters you can pass into the options to retrieve different, you know, cause depending on the view you may be looking at different geometry. You know, depending on the view, um, if it's set to course, you, you know, you're looking at different geometry. So the options gives you more like flexibility in how you grab elements from a list. So that's what I know. So I would say do your research on it. But fortunately, it, it was kind of a headache trying to get it to work right. And then I found... Uh, it's per all you ha all I have to do is just pass it into this get geometry uh, method um, and it returns the solid which then um, down here I'm actually checking for for that because it returns a solid and then a line I think um, and I just want the faces from the solid and so that's what I'm doing here uh, but originally when I was messing with this I thought I had to you know 
do this and then pass in the, the view that I'm in, the current view, and it was just kind of a headache because I used, I used, um, and I think this actually would be pretty valuable, but I'm going to pull this over to the right and then just grab one of these conduits, but I used the Revit lookup, Snoop current selection, I said, because this is where I started before, and I guess I should have started this video about this, but this is where I was like, okay, how do I get the faces? Um, so here's the geometry. I knew I needed to go here, and this is where I saw this. Like, okay, what's you know, what are these? Um, and then I went here uh, and saw that it was a solid, and then I could grab this. I think one of these other ones returns multiple yes yeah, so we've got a line point solid so that's where i think the options it's like depending on the parameters you pass into it it will return different things and so all i need was this so this solid and then from here i can actually get the faces and so uh, by getting this property we can see there's different faces in here uh, but these are the the four that we need this is these are the end so these are the planar faces um and yeah and that's that's kind of um that's originally how i was like okay i know i can get there now i just need those things and to be able to pass it into the method um and it took a, a bit of messing around with the options to get it get it right and then i just found it was pretty easy just pass in the de default option and it returned what I needed. So um, this first function applies the paint, okay? Uh, and the second one, I pretty much just copied it and removed some of the inputs. So this just needs element and it just needs the face. Uh, and that's it. So we're looping through the faces that we return up here and then we're um, passing it into this remove paint uh, method, which again is in the document class that we saw above. And it just takes in the element ID and then the face. Um, same with this one, except for it takes the material. And so we've got element ID, uh, the face, and then the material ID. And then that will apply the paint. And so that's what this method does. Again, this is in the document class. Uh, and then down here, I just have a condition that just checks that uh, Boolean. So this one right here checks to see if that's true or false if it's true um, and that's what this is it just says if because if if this is true um, it will run this here which is going to loop through our element input so this list up here and it's going to apply this paint function that we have um, either right here or this this here is applying this function right here and then if it isn't true, it, it this down here will apply this function. And then the output is just done. So we can see that here. But yeah, that's it. I mean, um, it was kind of fun going through this. It was a bit of a headache with the options, but it was interesting to learn more about indexers and how those worked. And I still have a lot to learn there, but it was easy to get it in here, return the uh, uh solid which then i was able to get the the faces from but it took and actually up here is what i'm talking about so this options and then the um current view doc active view i skipped over this i totally did not see i just forgot i even put this in here but this is what i mean it has different um parameters that you would in, input stuff into and so I'm going to, uh, I'm going to comment this out and see if it works. I thought I had done that, but I can't remember. So let's just run this and see. Okay, let's run this again. Yeah, so that's what I mean. The default options worked fine um, without setting any parameters. And so originally I was doing active view and I, I, I was also not using this method here to get geometry. I was using dot geometry. Um, and it just,
could not I could not figure it out. And then um, I, I found this method. I passed in uh, the options class, uh, and it worked fine. So, um, but yeah, I mean, anyways, it works. It applies the material. I can remove and add the materials uh, really easily. Um, and it was just fun kind of doing this. And so hopefully if you're doing something like this, you could use this script, um, and, um, apply it on your own project. So, uh, it'll be on GitHub. Feel free to download it. And yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.